In this lesson, I will teach you how to use the particle generator. The particle generator is something very powerful in TV paint. So here is a particle I have just drawn with just three uh, little bubbles. I will go into the project tab and I will give them a name. And I will go into a new clip to uh, set in place my particle generator. Let's open the FX tag. And so the particle generator can be found here into rendering particle generator. The particle generator works in three steps, three important parts. We have the world, we have the images, and we have the particles. The world is just like our own world. I mean, you can manage the gravity, you can manage uh, a wind, the strength of the wind, its direction. You also have the emitter. The emitter is the, the element, the part that emits the particle. So it can be a line, it can be a dot. Here I will choose a line. Doesn't look like a line, so let's click on the red squares and yeah, make it turn into a line. Perfect. And then now I need to create my particles. So I'll go into the particle tab just here. For my comfort and also for your comfort, I advise you to decrease the timeline size and increase the FX tag size. So I have clicked on the particle tab and I will create my particle. New, perfect. So now I can immediately see a little rendering because by default we have a particle. It's like a, it's like a just little white bubbles, like a snowflakes like this. But I don't want to use these basic snowflakes. I would like to use the bubbles I have created on the previous clip. So I will go on the shape tab just here and I will click on source here and I will define the source bubbles. It doesn't be safe, it doesn't, it's not a problem. Let's say yes. Now we can see the results. Perfect. Not perfect yet, actually. Let's change some details. So let's go on the current tab just here. And let's change some details, like for example, the size. Here my bubbles are giant sized, so we will lower the value and use something smaller. That's better. Let's lower it and it go detail again. Okay, perfect. Um we can notice that in the timing, yes, when the when the bubble is getting old, it slowly disappears. The problem is this element, the opacity. And especially this graphic just here, this profile. If I click on it, uh, you notice that the graphic is like this. It means that the more the particle uh, is being old and the more it becomes transparent. So here I will change the graphic and do this. Yeah, perfect. Uh, something else. The problem is that um, here my bubbles are falling and bubbles usually goes up. So I will change the weight value just here. I will use a negative value in order to have my bubbles going up and not going down. I just uncheck the HUD in order to see the result. Not bad. Anyway, another thing that is quite weird, maybe you didn't notice it, maybe you did notice it, is the fact that the bubble sometimes is doing like a little whoop, like this little um, ellipse before going up. Can you see it? Yeah, for example, for this one is really talking like this. The guilty element is actually the HUD, the emitter. Because here the emitter emits on uh, the whole line. It emits here and it emits here. That's not what I want, so I will decrease the angle value and I will put it at the top like this. Much better. Now I can eventually place my HUD at the bottom.
Perfect. There are a lot of bubbles here, so I will decrease the number of particles per second. That's great. Mm, something else. If you remember, my original clip contained three bubbles. And here we always see the same image. The problem is here in the shape. Because we can also define the animation of the particle following its edge. But here, I don't want to change the animation following its edge. I would like to change it. I will choose the random option. And so the particle will move randomly much better. Usually bubbles are always a little wobbly. So to get this aspect, I will change a little bit the profile on the size. And actually I will have something like this in order to make the bubbles wobbly. Perfect. Now I can also define um, a limit for my bubbles because here they are going up and up and up and never stops. To do so, we'll create a new layer. I uncheck preview and I will draw a line. This line will be used as an alpha collision. The alpha collision can be check here on the world part, just here. It means now the bubbles will uh, bounce on this alpha element. But here I won't use uh, the source, it means what I have here on this current layer. I will check source layer list and in zero. I don't forget to change the pause behavior. And I can now hide this layer and go back to my layer that will have the particles. Let's check preview and enjoy. Boing, boing, boing. It's maybe a little too much for bubbles, so I will reduce the bounce value. I will go into images, particle, current, and I will lower the bounce value. That's enough for bubbles. And last thing, the problem here is the fact that we have to wait a few seconds before seeing uh, the bubbles. To avoid this behavior, we will go here on the current tab in the imager, and I will pre-render my particle. Great. And I can apply the effect on my layer.